This episode is brought to you by Death on the Nile, exclusively in theaters February 11th. The greatest detective of all time, Hercule Poirot, returns to solve another deadly case. Join Poirot on a wild ride down the Nile River, promising luxury, intrigue, and murder. Grab your friends and get ready to solve this murder mystery on the big screen. Starring Kenneth Branagh and Gal Gadot. Premiering only in theaters February 11th. This episode is brought to you by DirecTV Stream. Introducing DirecTV Stream, the best of live TV and on demand. Which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. So whether you want to catch the game live or watch the latest blockbuster, they've got you covered. And there's no annual contract. DirecTV Stream. Get your TV together at directtv.com. Requires high-speed internet and compatible device. Content varies by package and location. Restrictions apply. This episode is brought to you by Bumble. When it comes to dating, your first move can be anything. You just have to make it. With Bumble, it's easy to start the conversation and see what good things come your way. A dance partner, laughter over drinks, maybe the perfect kiss, Ready to find out what happens next? Download Bumble and make the first move at Bumble.com. Make sure to check out Drink Champs, your number one music podcast on the Black Effect Podcast Network. Hosts NORE and DJ EFN sat down with artist and icon Ye, which Vulture called one of 2021's most significant interviews. I literally had to go like Thanos, and I don't want to have to be the villain, but when I went and did the Donda thing... Ye returned, yes. and everybody had to sit back and watch the real leader. Check out Drink Champs' conversation with Ye and many more legendary artists each and every Friday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Hello, listeners. I'm your host, Amara, and this is Black Girl Gone, a true crime podcast. On this episode of Black Girl Gone, we tell the story of two women missing from Cleveland, Ohio. Raja McQueen, a 27-year-old mother of two, was last seen on June 26, 2021. The last sighting of Raja was of her in the passenger seat of her Nissan. Audriana Barnes was 18 when she went missing, just weeks away from her 19th birthday. The day her family last heard from her was July 30, 2021. She texted her mom's boyfriend to ask him to pick her up, but neither Razor or Adriana have been seen or heard from since. The families of these women do not believe that they would willingly leave, and so that begs the question, what happened to Razor and Adriana, and who was responsible for their disappearances? This is Razor and Adriana's story. The stories of missing Black women continue to grow. Every day, a new report of a missing Black woman or girl is filed, And even after all of this discussion last year around missing white women syndrome and the lack of attention women of color get, they still aren't getting the attention. Both Raja and Adriana went missing before Gabby did last year, and they have received not even a fraction of the coverage. The media knows the issues that exist and the lack of coverage, and yet they still won't give any of these stories the coverage that they need. Both of the families in this case have questioned both the lack of attention and the lack of resources being used to help find these young women. Why are some cases worthy of the FBI and mainstream media attention while others are ignored? We will begin today's episode with Raja's story. Raja McQueen is from Cleveland, Ohio. She was born March 21st, 1994, which would make us birthday twins because my birthday is March 21st too. Raja is the youngest of eight children. Now, the people that know Raja best say that she is a very confident young woman with a keen sense of style. In an interview with Spectrum News One, her cousin Alicia said that Raja's personality matched her dress code and that she could turn a garbage can into a photo shoot. But aside from being the best dressed in the room, Raja is also a hard worker and has several different interests, all of which show you the different sides of her very confident personality. Her cousin said that when Raja had her mind set on something, there was no convincing her otherwise. 
In 2021, Raja was working as a certified nursing assistant, but she was also in school studying music, which was a passion of Raja's, who both sang and rapped. Raja was attending Rosedale Bible College, and Raja was just as passionate about her faith as she was about the other things in her life. Raja's Facebook page is filled with Bible verses and posts about God. And in 2021, Raja put out a gospel EP titled Warfare. It's clear that Raja was a person who was very serious about her faith, and she was not afraid to let everyone know. Raja was not only open about her faith on social media, but she also let people into some of the more personal battles that she had been dealing with. She had apparently been married and recently got a divorce. It's something that she described as a very painful process that at the time felt like death. But she was using her pain for purpose and as part of her music and her testimony about how God can get you through even the worst times. Raja is also the mother of two boys who she made sure she kept just as fly as she was. And she's a loving, dedicated mother. And so that's why with all the things going on in Raja's life that were positive, it makes no sense that she would just vanish. Rosedale Bible College, the school Raja attended, was about two hours away from Cleveland. And so during the semester, Raja had been living at school. But at the end of the semester, she came back home to Cleveland. On June 25th, 2021, according to Raja's sister, Shamir, Raja was at her mom's house and had been there most of the day. Now, nothing that day seemed out of the ordinary. And from everything that I can gather about Raja's family, they're a very close-knit family. And so I get the impression that they spend a lot of time together. Raja's mom is also battling cancer, and so I'm sure her children spend a lot of time with her, making sure that she's okay. But that day, after a few hours of hanging out at her mom's, Raja decided to leave. She told her mom that she was going to meet a friend. Now, it's not clear what time Raja left, but Raja owned a 2018 silver Nissan Sentra, and so she got in her car and left her mom's house. A few hours later, around midnight, Raja called her mom to tell her that she was still with her friend. But that was the last time anyone in Raja's family ever spoke to her again. The next day, Saturday, June 26th, Raja's family did not hear from her. They had called her phone several times, but their calls were going straight to voicemail. Raja's family immediately knew that something was wrong. Between their mother being ill and the fact they are very close meant that they talked to Raja all the time. And so for an entire day to go by and no one had seen her or heard from her meant that something had to have been wrong. Once Raja's family realized that no one had seen or heard from Raja, they contacted the Cleveland Police Department to report her missing. Raja's family and friends then turned to social media to ask for help in locating Raja. Within days of her going missing, Raja's family was frantic. And as the days went by, they were more and more convinced that something bad had to have happened to Raja. Now, I'm sure it was never a possibility for Raja's family that she had left and not said anything to anybody. Remember, Raja has two children, and so she would not have been gone for any amount of time without being in contact with someone in her family. Like many families in this position, Raja's family was left in the early days and weeks to search on their own. They began canvassing the area around where Raja is known to frequent, and they went door to door asking if anyone had seen Raja or her car. The car Raja owned was also missing, and so they were also looking for her car, hoping that it would lead them to Raja. Eventually, police did join in on the search for Raja, but in the weeks after she vanished, there was no sign of Raja or her car. Three weeks after Raja was last seen, her family and friends held a vigil for Raja to pray for her safe return. Around the same time, the local media in Cleveland began to cover the story about the missing mother of two. But three weeks had gone by, and Raja's family didn't feel like Cleveland PD had done enough at that point to look for Raja. Local news station Cleveland 5 covered the vigil, and this is what Raja's family had to say. This is a mother of two, two children. Why would she just up and leave her children for no reason? When you just look at her, you can see joy. My birthday was yesterday. She would never not call me or... Raisha's family had found themselves in the same place many families of missing people find themselves in. They complain that the police are not attentive to their cases, and despite the family telling them otherwise, police tend to treat these cases as if the person just left on their own. In July 2021, Shamir, Raisha's sister, was interviewed by Court TV's Closing Arguments. 
The clip is featured on the YouTube channel Profiling Evil. And on that show, Shamir is asked about the friend that Raja had gone to see that night and whether or not anyone in Raja's family had spoken to this person to see what they had to say. Shamir says that she did, in fact, reach out to the friend to see what they knew. Now, according to Shamir, this friend told her that they hadn't seen Raja since Thursday. But then they later said that they saw her late Friday going into Saturday, but had not seen her since. Now, Shamir never reveals whether or not this person is a male or a female, but she had spoken to this person, which means that police had most likely spoken to them as well, although that's not known for sure. Months went by with no new information about Raja. Her story did not make the mainstream media, and most people outside of Cleveland had not even heard the name Raja McQueen. But Raja's family was not giving up. They were still passing out flyers, and they were still searching for her. During her interview, Shamir said that she had been told the FBI was getting involved in the investigation. It's not known how much involvement the FBI has had in this case, but investigators did confirm that the FBI has joined in on the investigation. But that was little solace to Raja's family because months had gone by and Raja was still missing. In the time since Raja's family had last seen her, they had been trying to figure out her last movements. The last time they had spoken to her was late Friday night, but they had no idea where Raja had been or where she had gone after that. And no one had come forward to say they had seen her after that. And so Raja's whereabouts before she went missing were the first part of this mystery investigators would need to figure out. After July, the local news media coverage about Raja died down. There weren't any articles that I could find about her disappearance, and there were no new updates given about Raja. Investigators, however, had been working on Raja's case, and they were trying to find any clues or evidence that would lead them to Raja. Three months after Raja was last seen, her family appeared in an interview with Cleveland Five. And during this segment, new information is revealed about Raja's last known whereabouts. And before this, I can't find anything that mentions this information. And so it leads me to believe that the first time it's revealed is during this segment with Raja's family. And information is revealed that Raja was last seen on surveillance video at a gas station on June 26th. She's seen that day at around 7.30 a.m. getting into her car at East 131st Street and Harvard Avenue in Cleveland. The car is then seen driving off, but Raja was not driving the car. She was in the passenger seat. Almost four hours later, at around 11.15, Raja's car is again seen on surveillance. But now, the car is traveling west on Harvard toward Broadway. But Raja is no longer in the car. Now, this information is the first time that any real information about Raja was released. And it was helpful because it let people know that Raja was alive on Saturday at 7.30 a.m. and she was with her vehicle, even though she was not driving it. But Raja being seen at the gas station meant that there may be additional witnesses and a new area to search. Now, it's not clear when investigators learned the information about Raja's car, but after three long months, Raja's family still were not any closer to finding where Raja was and what happened to her. The lack of attention and resources being dedicated to Raja's case left her family wondering why. They had been watching the coverage that Gabby Petito was receiving from mainstream media and watched millions of people share and discuss her story. It was and still is very difficult for them. They, like many people, don't think that Gabby didn't deserve attention, they just don't know why Raja hasn't. Her sister Shamir said this. For nothing. Black girl just missing. And I'm not saying no one is more important than the other because she's not the only person that's missing. I just want those resources that everybody else is getting to at least apply for her. Now, as much time as I spend looking for cases, I only recently heard about Raja. A few weeks after the interview, investigators revealed troubling new information about Raja's case. In October 2021, investigators revealed that when Raja's car reappeared hours after it was last seen being driven by an unknown person, the car had a bullet hole in the rear passenger side door. It's also reported that the license plate and the hubcaps from the car had been removed. Investigators revealed this new information in an attempt to get help from the public. Somebody may have seen something that may be useful. 
Now, investigators in this case said that they have dedicated thousands of hours to Raja's case and have searched areas using drones, helicopters, and cadaver dogs. They also said that they have coordinated with other agencies to pull resources, but they have come up empty-handed, and that's why they need the public's help. Raja's family said that one of the detectives on the case, Detective Callahan, has kept them updated on the case and that he does reach out to them and listen to them whenever they have new information or just need an update. Raisha's family believe that the police are doing everything that they can with the little information that they have. The news of her car having a bullet hole in it, though, was devastating for Raisha's family. They don't know what it means, but they know that it's not a good sign. As much as investigators do to solve a case, a big part of that is people coming forward with information. And in Raisha's case, investigators need help. There's very little information about Raja's disappearance, but what we do know is unsettling. Someone knows what happened to Raja, and her family needs you to come forward and say something. The last sighting of Raja was with an unknown person, and then her car turned up hours later with a bullet hole in it. That pretty much confirms that Raja did not leave on her own. Her family is holding on to the hope that Raja will come back home safe. But Raja's story needs more attention. Her family is out here still searching for her, and they need the public's help. People can be found, and cases can be solved. We have all seen the power of social media. We've seen what it can do to put pressure on police or witnesses. And the reality of it is is that the mainstream media feeds off whatever is popular on social media these days. Before CNN picked up Gabby's story, it was being shared thousands of times across social media channels. And the media cares about what they think we care about. And so we need to give stories like Raja's that same energy. It's now been seven months since Raja McQueen was last seen. And her sons have been without their mom for seven months. Her mom and her sisters have had to spend seven months searching for Raja. They just want Raja to come home. And they just want answers. Raja McQueen was last seen getting into her silver Nissan at a gas station on the corner of East 131st Street and Harvard Avenue in Cleveland at 7.30 a.m. on June 26, 2021. Raja is 5'7", and she weighs 135 pounds. She has black hair, and she has brown eyes. And if you have any information about Raja McQueen's disappearance, please contact the Cleveland Police Department. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We talk about BetterHelp a lot on this show, and this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. For example, some people think that you should wait until things are unbearable to go to therapy, but that isn't true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get worse, and it can help you avoid those lows. BetterHelp is an amazing tool, and I love how it's making therapy easier to access. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Black Girl Gone listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash girlgone. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash girl gone. In June 2021, 27-year-old Raja McQueen disappeared from Cleveland, Ohio. A month later, and less than 20 miles away in the Cleveland suburb of Warrensville Heights, the family of Audriana Barnes was experiencing the same pain and anguish that Raja's family was feeling. Because like Raja, Audriana had disappeared. Audriana Barnes lived in Warrensville Heights and is the oldest of four children. Audriana's mom, Akua, said that she is a very caring person and that she was the type of person to give you anything that she could to help you. Audriana graduated high school at 17, and instead of going to college, Audriana decided that she wanted to serve her country, and so she made plans to enlist in the Army Reserves. During the summer of 2021, Audriana had a boyfriend and was getting closer to her plans to enlist. At the end of July, Audriana was scheduled to meet with the recruiter so that she could begin the process. 
Now, Adriana's mom wasn't really here for the idea of her daughter enlisting in the reserves, but it was something that Adriana really wanted to do. Adriana was scheduled to meet with the recruiter on July 30th. Adriana was 18 at the time and just weeks away from her 19th birthday. She decided that she was going to spend the night at her boyfriend's home in Cleveland on the 29th. The next day, according to the Army recruiters, they picked Adriana up from her boyfriend's house. And after the meeting, they dropped Adriana back off at her boyfriend's apartment. Now, they aren't sure whether or not she went inside the apartment or not. And it's not clear what time the Army recruiter dropped Adriana off, but she spoke to her mom after the meeting at around 2.30 p.m. The two spoke, and then according to Adriana's mom, they agreed to talk again later that evening. However, Adriana's mom didn't speak to her again. Around 7 p.m. that night on the 30th, Adriana's mom's boyfriend received a text from Adriana's phone asking him if he could pick her up from her new job at a gas station. Now, this was very strange to Adriana's mom because she knew nothing about her daughter having a new job at a gas station. Also, Adriana had told her when they spoke earlier that day that she had actually gotten a job offer from a factory. So it was very odd that suddenly she had a new job at a gas station. Her mom and her mom's boyfriend tried to get information about this job, but Adriana never replied to the messages about the job. She did, however, tell them that she intended to be home the next day to celebrate her mom's birthday. Now, it's not clear what happened next, but Adriana did not come home the next day. Her mom said that after attempting to call her daughter and getting no response, she went to the last place she knew her to be, her boyfriend's apartment. Akua told Spectrum News this. That's when I went to look for her. I went to her boyfriend's house like, hey, we're, we're Audrey. He's like, oh, she gone. She left last night. She said she was coming to you. Y'all had plans. I'm like, yeah, we did, but she never showed up. You know, calling and calling and no response. So at 9 o'clock, when 9 o'clock came and I hadn't talked to her, I went and filed a missing persons report. Now, of course, a coup was more likely than not met with resistance from police since Adriana was 18 and technically an adult. But eventually, Warrensville Heights police department did look into Adriana's disappearance, but Akua said that it had not been nearly enough. Adriana's case had gotten even less local media coverage than Raja's. Articles about her disappearance didn't really pop up until she had already been missing for three months. Now, the last person known to have seen Adriana was her boyfriend, and so investigators did attempt to speak to him, but according to them, it did not go well. The detective said that they walked up to introduce themselves and Adriana's boyfriend blew up on them and started calling them names and telling them how much he hates police. He then said that he wanted a lawyer and then just turned and walked away. They were never able to speak to him and it's not clear if that has changed. The investigators on this case say that they have reached a dead end and that they have exhausted all leads in this case. They claim that there are no signs of foul play that exists, and so they aren't really sure that anything actually happened to Adriana. But her mom, Akua, very much disagrees. She knows her daughter. She didn't have anything, no car, no money, no phone. So where could she have possibly gone? There seems to be very few answers about what happened to Adriana, but her mother knows that she did not just leave on her own. She, of course, has been left to search for her daughter on her own with the help of family and friends and members of the community. But like Raja's story, this case needs more public attention. As of now, there has been no new information about Adriana's case, and it doesn't seem like the police are really doing much to find new information. Akua, however, will not give up until she finds her daughter and brings her home. And my daughter knows that I'm not going to stop until I find her. And I'm not going to quit because if I quit, then who finds her? She matters to me. Until Adriana is brought home, she should matter to all of us. Adriana Barnes was last seen at Warner Road in Cleveland, in Cleveland, Ohio, on July 30th, 2021. Adriana is five foot five and weighs 175 pounds. 
She has two tattoos on her chest. One says beauty and the other says beast. If you have any information about Audriana Barnes or her whereabouts, please contact the Warrensville Heights Police Department. The disappearance of Raja and Audriana are sadly only two of the over 100 Black women that were reported missing last year in Cleveland and the thousands around the country. The reality is, is that we cannot give every single case the attention they deserve because there's so many cases. That's why organizations like Black and Missing and others are important because if a family has nothing else, they need an advocate and they need support. We can continue to do our part, however large or however small, to bring attention to these women and their stories. Whether you share a missing person flyer on social media or share episodes of shows like mine and others who are highlighting a missing Black woman or women of color, I will continue to tell these stories and do what I can to bring some attention to them. Both Raja and Adriana have been missing less than a year. So please, Share this story so that we can help their families bring more awareness about these missing women. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. We will be back next week with a brand new story. Join us on Patreon for exclusive mini-sodes and ad-free episodes. As always, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Black Girl Gone Podcast. Listening on Apple Podcasts? Show your support for the show by leaving a review and a five-star rating. Make sure to check out Drink Champs, your number one music podcast on the Black Effect Podcast Network. Hosts NORE and DJ EFN sat down with artist and icon Ye, which Vulture called one of 2021's most significant interviews. I literally had to go like Thanos, and I don't want to have to be the villain, but when I went and did the Donda thing, Ye returned. And everybody had to sit back and watch the real leader. Check out Drink Champs conversation with Ye and many more legendary artists each and every Friday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. I'm Colleen Witt. Join me, the host of Eating While Broke podcast, while I eat a meal created by self-made entrepreneurs, influencers, and celebrities over a meal they once ate when they were broke. Today, I have the lovely AJ Crimson, the official princess of Compton, Asia. Kidding, and Asia. This is The Professor. We're here on Eating While Broke, and today I'm going to break down my meal that got me through a time when I was broke. Listen to Eating While Broke on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.